Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to the newest episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your JPEG and tell me what you found difficult about processing this scene and I'll try and give you advice to make your life easier. Thank you very much to Larry Cox for sending me this Milky Way image. We've got some really cool techniques that I can demonstrate with these files. Now to begin with, we have nine different exposures and on each exposure, Larry illuminated a different part of the arch and we're going to use all nine exposures. Now the great thing about these techniques is that we don't have to do any fancy blending. We don't have to mask things out, which is going to take a while. We can blend the exposures really quickly and get a nice natural clean result. But before we do that, I'm going to use this top exposure as my base exposure. And I'm doing that because most of the arch isn't highly illuminated here and we have a good clean crisp image. So to get this image ready, I'm just going to bring the exposure up a tiny bit. I'm also going to bring the highlights up to accentuate the stars and bring up the clarity slider too, just to give the stars more contrast. It's okay if we affect the foreground and create noise here because we're going to replace this foreground really quickly and easily. Now I'm going to select all of these layers and I'm just going to add a slightly cooler temperature to the scene. That looks good. Now I'm going to open up the images in Photoshop. With all of our exposures in Photoshop, I'm just going to quickly stack them in Raya Pro. So that's now placed all of the exposures on top of each other. And our top exposure is actually our base exposure. So I'm going to unlock the background layer and I'm going to bring the base exposure to the bottom. And we're going to get straight into the really cool technique. The way we're going to blend all of these exposures that have illuminated the foreground is just by selecting them all and pressing lighten in our blend mode. And you'll see, not only do we now illuminate the entire foreground, we also create a really cool star trail effect. Now we're not going to do anything with the star trails today, that's for a different tutorial, so I'm actually going to mask these out. But before we do that, we can see that some areas of the foreground are just a little bit too bright for my liking. So we're going to bring down some of these areas just so the lighting is a bit more even. And we're going to do that by selecting the exposures where the foreground is a little bit too bright. And I can see by the thumbnails that these ones are the culprits. So I'm just going to select that layer and just bring the opacity down slightly. Now I'm going to bring the opacity down slightly on this one. You can see we're just darkening the foreground a little bit each time. There we go, that's much better. Now the reason why these exposures blended together so quickly by using lighting, which is one of my favorite blend modes, is because lighting compares all of the layers pixel by pixel and only keeps the brightest pixels. So between all of these exposures, it's only kept the brightest pixels in the foreground and in the sky, so this is the final result. So I'm gonna now select all of these exposures and put them in a group. And I'm gonna make this invisible. Now I'm going to go to select and color range. And we do that because we want to make a selection of the arch and not the sky, just so we can mask out the star trails. So to do that, I'm going to bring fuzziness up a little bit, choose my eyedropper tool, make sure the preview is set to grayscale so we can see it in the big screen and just press once on the arch. Now we choose our I plus tool and we just start to add to the selection each time. Now really, the most important thing is that we manage to create a nice separation between the sky and the foreground. If there are some areas like this which aren't properly masked, that's okay, we can just run a brush through them later. So I'm gonna bring the fuzziness down just a little bit just so we make a more accurate selection. And then I'm gonna choose these areas. There we go, that's a pretty good selection. And I'm going to bring the fuzziness down again just a tiny bit and press OK. Now I'm going to make this group visible and just press add a mask. And now we create a mask which has essentially selected the foreground and left the beautiful natural stars of the base exposure. 
and we can press alt or option and click on the mask just to see the mask and where we need to mask out or mask in so I'm just creating a black mask and I'm just masking out the area there and now a white mask and I'm just painting in the area in the foreground here and there we go that should do a nice job now I'm just going to crop the image very slightly I'm just going to bring the image up and crop the right very slightly and the reason why I'm doing this is so that we can put more emphasis on the stars here there was just a little bit of dead space at the bottom and to the right of the arch wasn't really adding to the composition but if we bring it along slightly we have a nice amount of foreground and extra emphasis on the stars so I'm just gonna press OK there now we can start to make some contrast adjustments and the great thing about having the foreground on one layer and the sky on the other layer is that we can treat these two very differently for example let's say we want to add more contrast to the sky we can create a levels layer and just put it on top of our sky layer and now we can bring the levels along nicely and we can bring the mid-tones along and just really emphasize the stars now we don't want it too bright or too surreal so once we're finished we can bring down the opacity just to make sure it looks nice and natural but also very impacting I'm not going to do it here but the other advantage of having the sky on one layer is that with Milky Way shots we tend to have a lot of noise so you can run your noise removal program on this layer and just remove noise on this layer and not affect the details in the foreground next I'm gonna choose this group and open up a curves layer and just clip the curve to the group so the changes will only affect this group and not the sky and I'm gonna bring the brightest parts down just a little bit just because I think the foreground is a little bit too bright and too distracting now if you think that the foreground looks a little bit superimposed on the sky which sometimes happens when we illuminate the foreground with a torch or a flashlight all we need to do is reduce the opacity slightly so that we blend in this exposure very gently and subtly to the base exposure and it just looks a little bit more natural now we can finish our image just with a very gentle contrast adjustment which will bring up the overall brightness of the image and I think just a soft vignette and I'm going to do a basic vignette by choosing the elliptical marquee tool setting the feather to 250 so it's nice and smooth and just dragging through the image when that's done I press control shift and I or command shift and I on a Mac and you'll see we've inverted our selection and now I just open up the curves layer and just bring down some of the upper midtones and there we've created a nice gentle vignette if it's a little bit dark we can bring down the opacity and if we want we can just brighten up the other parts of the image nicely just by adjusting our curves layer here and that's just a very quick edit just to give you an idea of how I would add some contrast in a nice natural vignette but the most important thing about this workflow is how to blend these exposures naturally and that's it for this week's tutorial so again thank you Larry Cox for sending me this image and if you want to take part in challenge Jimmy please send me your JPEG to challenge Jimmy Mac at gmail.com you can see the email address in the description of this video on YouTube so I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time